Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I would like to continue my previous video entitled Maritime Law Enforcement and Overfishing in the South China Sea. So this is the second part of the video. The final challenge to cooperation in the conglomerations of territorial dispute in IUU fishing, along with China's supremacy in MLE, China's Coast Guard easily surpassed all other SES nations combined in cross tonnage, with 190,000 tons of Coast Guard vessels of multiple types. In contrast, Vietnam and the Philippines possess 35,000 and 20,000 tons, respectively. While Indonesia possesses about 400 vessels compared to China's 1,300 ISR aircraft are both force multipliers in MLE and China has priority in each of these. Although China possesses great leverage when bargaining over the cooperative surplus. Recently, Non-cooperation persists because China has calculated it is better of using its MLE strength to unilaterally impose its own laws in the SES rather than submitting to terms acceptable to the other bordering states. This strategy is evident in repeated instances of the Chinese Coast Guard intervening in fishing dispute with Vietnam near the Paracel Island, with the Philippines near the Scabuso, and with Indonesia near Natuna. The problem with this unilateral Chinese strategy, aside from a lack of fairness, is that it has failed in the sense that overfishing persists. Despite its superiority in MLE, China has not been able to reverse the, the observable trend of depleting stock in the SES. In light of these issues, while geography and historical claims are immutable source to conflict, MLE capabilities are multiple and can be employed by the U.S. to mitigate the threat of overfishing in the SES. By providing MLE assistance to non-Chinese Coast Guard, the U.S. can at minimum assure China's attempt to unilaterally control the SES no longer appears feasible and may even bring about a fully cooperative agreement. Shaping the Condition for Cooperation an important notion from cooperative game theory is that when the right incentive structure is in place, players who would otherwise be in competition will form a cooperative coalition that is beneficial to all. The first objective of US MLE assistance is the SES should be to provide non-Chinese nation sufficient capabilities to police an area of the SES that can provide a sustainable level of fish to all nations in the coalition. Lacking this, some nations may acquiesce, may acquiesce to Chinese unilateralism as the best option. A fully cooperative agreement would include China, whose MLE capabilities would partially offset needed U.S. Assistance to combat IUU fishing and per economic theory total catch will increase as well. Well, while Chinese cooperation cannot be assumed, it is highly desirable and MLE assistance should be directed towards convincing China to the coalition can be an only vice adversary. While the Coast Guard features cited earlier show a clear capabilities advantage for China, it is not an overwhelming one. Consider, for instance, disparities in population and hence demand for fish. No Chinese nations account for only 25% of the population bordering the SES. So coalition MLE may only need to control comparatively small sections of it. Further, while China does process superior error in IS ISR assets than other SES nation, they still lack the US in these areas. Aircraft and ISR are comparatively cheap relative to large and surface vessel. This fact make it seem promising the US can cause effectively close the MLE capabilities gap. 
Looking at current Coast Guard and military aid budget provides a useful heuristic to assess this more fully. China spent approximately $1.7 billion per year from 2011 through 2015 to modernize its Coast Guard. In contrast, the U.S. currently spent over $10 billion per year on its Coast Guard. While Vietnam and the Philippines each spend about $200 million military aid for fiscal year 2019, allocated $30 million, $12 million, and $0 to the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia, respectively. The global vision to improve food security was allocated $518 million. Active participation by U.S. Coast Guard assets in the SES have been virtually non-exist. Through in May 2019, they participated in a combined exercise with the Philippines, perhaps signaling willingness by the U.S. to invest more in MLE, in MLE assistance. Given these figures, it is clear a relatively small investment in this modernization of regional Coast Guard could go a long way. While federal budgeting is competitive and slow to change in the U.S., there are strong reasons to justify increased funding for MLE in the SES. Aside from the general notion throughout the Department of Defense, of a ship in emphasis toward indo pacom there is growing trend toward gray zone operation where coast guard are better positions than navies to play the central security role further mle assistance is ultimately intended to induce security cooperation with china to combat iuu fishing <coughs> Successful cooperation on the comparatively being issue of overfishing may pay in the dividend in resolving continuous issues closer closer to the level of war. The above analysis maker makes makes it appear visible the US could provide the necessary MLE assistance to cordon of a sections of the SES sufficient to supply sustainable level of fish to, per to partner and at a moderate cost. The problem, however, is that due to the migratory nature of fish, this, corner, this cordon of area must be larger than what a simple calculation of fish per capita would suggest. Fish stock intentionally left on caught by the coalition will migrate to waters not policed by the coalition in an ideal league where China wouldn't de deplete these migratory resources but reals realistically overfishing should be expected as China disagree with the fairness of the coalition's policy. To account for expected Chinese access, the coalition arm must expand. So, not only does require MLE assistance increase, but there is a risk of becoming too provocative, provocative and causing China to escalate hostilities, hostilities to level of conflict. It is therefore critical to assess all the likelihoods of China joining an expanding coalition and, in, and alter, alternatively escalating to war. The rationale for China joining the coalition in the face of U.S. MLE assistance is that, given the strength and ability of the coalition to defend its waters, China's strategy of unilaterally imposing its own laws for sustainably fishing will become clearly impractical. This is, however, unlikely due to multitude of internal problems China currently faces that hinder its ability to wage a conventional war against U.S. partners. For example, China is facing a workforce crisis where cheap labor, which has the catalyst for its economic miracle that began in the late 1970s, is disappearing. 
so this is the end of the article don't forget to watch the previous part and also don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye